It's time to weigh in on the new Radeon 6600. The first one we're going to take a look at is the Gigabyte Eagle version, and much like the 6600 XT, there's no reference version of the 6600. Now, AMD said that the availability for the 6600 won't be an issue, and the supply should be quite good, but as usual when we're filming this video, I've got no idea how true that's going to be, and given what we've seen over the last year with the fluctuations in pricing and availability, it's pretty hard to say at this point in time. So availability aside, let's take a look at this new Navi 23 based GPU. So let's find out what it's all about. We ran this Gigabyte Eagle card through our regular suite of benchmarks on both Windows and Linux, and we wanted to see how this card stacks up against some other GPUs that we've tested on this test bench that we've got right here. As usual, there is plenty of data to unpack with this video, and there's chapters in all of our videos, so if you wanna to jump to a certain section of a video, it's as easy as mousing over that little progress bar or checking out the timestamps in the description. Also, make sure you watch the whole video so you can get the context of what I'm trying to say in this video. Okay, these are also the out of the box figures. But let's get all of this data unpacked. We use our regular test bench for all of this testing to give you guys accurate results based on the testing that we've done with this hardware in particular. But I think we're probably gonna be retesting all of this very, very soon. We're probably gonna build a new test bench, but yeah, that's gonna be a whole nother video, whole nother time. But let's kick this off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use that magic little pause button at any time during the video to take a look at those graphs for a bit longer. The first thing you're probably noticing at 1080p is the 6600 comes in just behind the 3060 and that's kind of the gist of this GPU in general. However, how far behind is an entirely different story. In Linux at 1080p, the gap between the 6600 and the 3060 is much larger. Now I've dropped the direct Windows to Linux comparisons for this video only because of time constraints. This card arrived quite late in our testing cycle. In Windows at 1440p, we're seeing more of the same story with the 6600 coming in behind the 3060, but the gap is a bit larger between the two cards. If we look at Linux at 1440p, we're seeing that the 6600 is coming in behind the 2060. And I suspect this is to do with drivers and we keep seeing this result kind of for the rest of the video, and we did additional testing as well just to make sure everything was in line, and that's what we found. This card is really geared towards 1080p, but you know what? I just had to test 4K performance because I just wanted to know what it was like. At 4K, we're seeing the performance be pretty underwhelming with it coming in behind the 2060 by a single frame. In Linux at 4K, we're seeing almost the same story that we did with Windows, with the 6600 coming in behind the 2060, but ultimately, you're not buying this card for 4K, let's be honest here. All right, let's move over to Unigen Superposition. For these tests, we performed three tests in total. We used a 4K optimized preset, 1080p extreme, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. We get comments a lot of the time along the lines of why we use OpenGL versus DX11 for comparison. We're just comparing the out of the box experience with this benchmark only. And yeah, let's do that. First up at the 1080p Extreme Benchmark in Windows, this one is highly GPU bound, and we're seeing the 6600 coming in behind the 2060. In Linux at 1080p Extreme, we're seeing the 6600 beating out the 2060 by a single frame. You'll notice that I've stopped talking about the 3060 because it's not as relevant with this benchmark anymore. At 1440p in Windows, we're seeing the 6600 come in behind the 2060 by a single frame and being considerably slower than the 6600 XT. But in Linux at 1440p, we're seeing the inverse of that with the 6600 beating out the 2060. At 4K in Windows, we're seeing the 6600 coming in even behind the 5600 XT. And that's not something that I was expecting. Luckily, I've still got this 5600 XT on hand. I retested it and we saw the same result again. In Linux at 4K, we're seeing a pretty similar pattern with the 6600 once again coming in behind the 5600 XT. 
It's uh, not what I was expecting at all. A bit bizarre, but it is what it is. All right, next up is Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in both Windows and Linux. In 1080p and Windows, the 6600, much like other AMD GPUs, does not perform as well as its Nvidia counterparts. And don't be fooled by Basemark's high FPS scores though, this is just a benchmark. In Linux at 1080p, the 6600 had more of a predictable run. Again, AMG GPUs don't typically perform as well in this benchmark with Basemark. And this is something that we've observed over the last almost two years of using this benchmark. At 1440p in Windows, the test is a lot more predictable and the 6600 actually ends up equaling the performance of the older 5700 XT. In Linux at 1440p, we're seeing the 6600 actually slightly outpace the 2060. That one is a bit of a surprise to me as well. At 4K in both Windows and Linux, we're seeing the same trend that we saw with 1440p, with Windows coming out on top, but the gaps slightly closing. And again, the 6600 and the 2060 here are trading blows at every single opportunity. Because this card, much like the other Radeon 6000 GPUs, also supports smart access memory. And I wanted to see what the deal was with SAM performance compared to a stock performance run on a Ryzen 5000 system. So I slapped together a quick test system with the Ryzen 5 5600X and I retested everything with both the 6600XT and the 6600 to see if there was a noticeable performance uplift with SAM being enabled and it being turned off. And with these tests here, I only ran six tests in total because it was just a bit of a a fact-finding hunt. I didn't want to spend too much time on this. At 1080p with Shadow of the Tomb Raider with SAM enabled, there was a 3 FPS gain, but more interestingly, a 9 FPS gain with the 6600 XT. At 1440p, there was only a single frame difference with having SAM enabled. That's pretty negligible, and if I'm being honest, it might as well be the exact same result. At 4K, we saw the same thing with the 6600 with there only being a single frame of difference with the performance here. In superposition at 1080p, there was no difference whatsoever, but that's no surprise to me because SAM is pretty subjective and doesn't always offer performance uplifts in every single test that we do. At 1440p, we saw much of the same here. The big surprise was that we actually saw a pretty significant uplift with the 6600 XT. It's a nice surprise. Lastly, at 4K, we only saw a single frame performance increase. This is not even enough for it to be counted as a significant increase at all. So in the real world, you yeah, probably wouldn't notice it at all. We ran our one hour stress test in Ida 64 and we couldn't get the Gigabyte 6600 Eagle above 66 degrees with the hotspot temperature in our 18 degree climate controlled office. And I always mention this, but it's important to remember that we're running this on an open air test bench in a climate controlled environment. The results in the closed system will be different to what we observed here and what we recorded, but we include this again because it's an open air test system that's consistent. As far as power consumption at idle, it was only drawing around four watts of power. This is the same that we saw with the 6600 XT. And again, this is showing the power efficiency with RDNA 2. And we've actually seen this quite a bit with all of these Radeon 6000 cards. We observed it hitting a board power draw, maxing out at 100 watts at full load over a period of one hour. Given that this card is supposed to be 15% slower than the 6600 XT, it also consumes 15% less power. So there's a little fun fact for you. We also observed the Gigabyte card to be audible with zero coil one over our stress testing period. Again, open air test system. We're gonna hear everything. Also, we can control everything. In a closed system, you're definitely not gonna hear this card. Now these acoustic observations make way more sense for a normal user since numbers for acoustic readings for regular people just don't make sense unless you have a whole system sitting right next to you, blasting its fans in your face, which this one definitely won't be doing. The Gigabyte 6600 Eagle uses a single PCIe power connector. It's got no RGB, so there's no need to run any lighting software for it, although it probably does detect an RGB fusion for some reason. It's also a two slot card that measures around 282 millimeters in length, with a triple fan design. As far as availability of this particular 6600 from Gigabyte, I got no idea, 
But as mentioned, AMD reckons there'll be plenty of supply to MSRP, but we'll, we'll, we'll see about that in a few days and we'll come back and talk about all this in another video when we check out another card. As far as pricing of the Gigabyte Radeon RX 6600 Eagle, it's going for around 329 US dollars at the time of filming. Obviously, again, as I always say in these videos, this is subject to availability, which at the time of filming is unknown because the card's technically not out when I'm making this. Also, as far as Aussie pricing, I don't have any Aussie pricing, but I, I, I guess we're going to be robbed at gunpoint as usual because, you know, we always get screwed for pricing here. <laughs> okay. Now that's all out of the way, the 6600 is supposed to be really geared towards 1080p gaming from which we saw all of our testing. I think that's a pretty fair assumption. Considering the new price of a 2060 here is about the same as the 6600 XT, I think the value here will be good and even in Australia. Well, we'll see anyway, because everything's inflated here. Now I can't speak for the rest of the world in terms of pricing and whatnot, but I think this card from AMD is probably AMD's last effort to get something in just before that holiday period. So gamers who haven't been able to get their hands on a new GPU will have a chance at getting something in their system before games like Battlefield and Call of Duty drop later in the year. The timing also means that they've probably had lots of lead time to guarantee supply of this new Navi 23 based GPU. Now, as far as MSRP, if this card does in fact launch at the price and can be picked up for this price, I think it might actually be worth it, but only in the current tech climate. That's a massive caveat with this here. Any other time, I would probably say this should be sold for around 249 US dollars at most. But right now with shortages in raw materials and basically everything just going berserk in the world right now, I feel like 329 is probably acceptable. The main issue I have with the 6600 is actually how the card's built. As mentioned before, it's a Navi 23 based GPU with a PCIe 4.0 by 8 interface, much like the 6600 XT. This is pretty confusing. Like I get that it probably doesn't need all of those PCIe lanes for its performance, but it's just odd that we live in a time where the card is only utilizing half of its interconnect when it's got a full by 16 edge connector on the card. Now, if you look closer at the PCB, you can see that there's no traces running from the other half of the PCB. Uh, that essentially means that the other half of the edge connector basically has a bunch of dummy contacts. And I know I, I kind of bang on about this weird stuff a lot of the time, but it, you know, it's just something that I thought was interesting. Now, let me know what you guys think of the 6600. Was my prediction of the 6600 when the 6600 XT launching, is it a mess? I, I'm not sure what AMD is gonna do about that rumored 6600. If this is the price for this, which should probably be the other way around, but yeah, it's gonna be a mess. Like that was, that's what I said. I said, I, I, this is probably gonna be a mess. Let me know about your thoughts in the comments and if you're able to get one of these cards at any point in time, even if you're not watching this when it launches, if you're watching it later, I just wanna know how much you ended up paying for this card. And I'm just keen to hear what you guys have to say later on in time when it comes to you guys actually playing with it and letting me know all that stuff. You know, you know how, you know how this works, right? Anyways, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. If you hated the video, you know what to do. Tell us what you hated about it. Hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek and 6600, huh? Is it too late? Is it too little? Too little, too late? You know what I'm trying to say? Let me know. You guys are the best. Thanks for watching.